So you ever see those newscaster compilations where the newscasters are all saying the same thing and they're pretty much talking about they're going to give you the honest broadcast, the honest review or opinion on something. And it, they're all pretty much saying the same exact message. The only thing that changes is their news station. And if you look at content creation going into 2023, you notice it's the same. The only thing that changes is the content creator. Me and you are going to talk about that today. currently almost like six o'clock in the morning uh, my wife got an appointment to go to uh, because we caught covid and traveling and we just getting married this year and stuff to kind of push back appointments so she's gonna do that and um i'm gonna do my own thing with you all righty so we are at one of my favorite spots where i live um it's called riverside and um, it's kind of a nature trail-ish kind of like park for kids outside, little recreation area uh, along the river. I'm just gonna see what I can get shots of. Also, I got some products that I want to show. All right, so the first one up, when I went to Walmart, I went to get a, a gift for my wife, but uh, I saw this and I was like, I gotta try this. This is by Bowers. This was like 20 bucks. This is kind of cool because I always thought about if I wanted to hook up a mic or shotgun mic or something like that to the top of the camera, even with cages, and I wanted to hook up a light if I wanted to do some nighttime vlogging. This one, you can put a light over here, probably not that heavy of a light, but you could put a light over here and you could put a microphone and then have your phone or, ta or uh, camera or something like that on it. This would probably be good for the Sony's EV-1. EV-10 or anything like big like that, even if you had the kit lens, I imagine this probably, the ball head would probably be too, uh, rough for it but you could definitely try it have a love hate relationship with this brand it's called vivitar it was really cheap um, it was like six dollars or something like that it's a pistol grip tripod i got a, a camera glider uh, the problem with it is that it's not very uh travel friendly <laughs> first up we have this vivitar like i said a little tripod um, pistol grip. It comes with a cell phone thing, so you can use your cell phone. As you can tell, it comes with a little phone grip, pistol grip. Um, the filling on it does feel kind of tough, but it also kind of feels cheap. I guess this, this part, wherever. It's a weird rubberized, feels like plastic craftsmanship and quality, of, I guess quality check. Uh, it's not the, not the greatest, I would say but it opens up like that, opens from the side, both of them. And then obviously you got the tripod and then you put the legs together and you got this and then you can just sit here like this and have the camera in front of you. So when it gets into a locking mechanism, you hit both reds and you move it up and down. It feels cheap. I'm not sure if it will be able to hold, like I said, the uh, Sony EV-10 on this, but it feels really lightweight. Finger grips or whatever actually fit nice. In, in my hand. It should get the work, the job done, I guess, for the Sony uh, ZV-1. Hearing people walk around me. I feel like I'm going crazy even though I'm already here. We're gonna look at this uh, Bauer grip. The ball head feels a little bit better. So that, there you go, you push that down and you lift it up and there you go, the phone. And then you put your phone in there. And then you, to store it, you just lay it down and then flip. The, the little legs up or wherever and it folds away nicely. The grip and the feel of these tripod legs are actually really, really well. And again, this was like 25 bucks, 24 bucks or something like that. It feels really good. It's not really bulky to hold. This one might be a win um, if you're interested in that. Um, it comes with an adapter for uh, GoPros. So you can use a GoPro. Yeah, I like it. I think uh, that's a win-win right there. Oops at the bottom of each little leg or wherever, little, little three puts. So maybe you can tie something in there, like a string or something if you need to for whatever reason. Um, and then obviously these actually screw into the side of this thing and uh, you just angle it up and then you have your light or your microphone or wherever on your side, like shotgun mic or wherever. Let's uh, 
Let's look at some shots. We out here shooting time lance lapses and stuff like that. I'm hoping that uh, it works out. So what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to go ahead and regular glide or wherever, just pan and stuff like that to see if it's good to turn up the, the speed on it so I can slow it down and everything. But I brought my gimbal that uh, is the Crane M3. I'm not the best with gimbals. I still need to work on um, doing that and everything. So we'll just have to see. But uh, let me go ahead and get some more B-roll shots and see what I can do with the gimbal. Alright, so I'm gonna try to vlog with this gimbal. Uh, this is like the first time I'm actually doing it. I went ahead and put everything back in my car as far as like the camera glider and stuff goes. The gimbal, I tried to do some stuff. I'm learning how to use it still. Crane M3 from Zion, I think that's how you say it. Uh, I do like it. It's a little windy out here, so I'm going to try to make sure I get everything. But as you can see, it is actually pretty nice. The sun is coming out. The winter storm, you would have never thought it was just last week. I said, I might have to get used to using a gimbal and stuff, but I love this feature. Like, hold on, let me show you guys. I can go from looking at me to handing around and showing y'all what's in front of me and everything. And if I click the button three times, it comes right back for a selfie. But it is a little windy. I'm sorry, but I feel I felt like, especially with this gimbal and stuff like that, I didn't really want to use the shotgun microphone because I wasn't sure how it would do with um, the wind and everything. And I'm not sure if this is going to work out or whatever. All right, guys, so I've been taking pictures and stuff. Um, but essentially what I wanted to talk to you about is that you might be a content creator yourself and you're going into 2023 and you're like, I got to do the Instagram reels and I got to do YouTube shorts and I got to do TikTok and I got to do YouTube videos. And everybody's so focused on that stuff and they lose themselves in trying to find about like how to get the best, the more most followers and stuff like that. And there's people out there, and if you don't know, there's a lot of them, even the big content creators, who literally just do stuff in order to get views. Uh, whether it's copying trends or whatever, everybody doing the stupid TikTok dances and stuff, and not actually like learning the fundamentals of like break dancing or popping and locking, uh, animation or anything like that. Like people who literally just do that stuff just to get famous and get the numbers and stuff. And if you don't have like this amount of followers or subscribers or something like that you got to keep pushing and pushing and pushing and you're barely seeing any kind of like improvement and it's more so with gaming and stuff like that and like following the trends of gaming and stuff it, it's just oversaturated find something find when people say find your niche and they just they keep on thinking of one thing it's like i gotta find my niche within video games so i can upload certain shorts or clips or something like that and since I had done shorts, YouTube shorts and like TikTok and stuff, not so much on my TikTok, but like games like Apex was doing good, Call of Duty was eh, but Apex was doing good. And even if I was getting negative comments and stuff, I still, for the most part, would get uh, a lot of views. And that would help my channel. It helped me grow a little bit, but overall, I wasn't having fun. Like I didn't really like playing Apex for like two, three hours and not really enjoy myself. Maybe get like three clips every time I stream, well, two to three clips and posting it or whatever, seeing a negative comments. But yeah, I was getting subscribers. I was getting viewers and stuff like that. It helped out, but I wasn't enjoying what I was doing. And I'm not saying that goes for everybody. You might actually still enjoy playing games and stuff. And I was paying somebody to edit, upload, do all that stuff. But you might actually enjoy fully doing all that stuff, but don't get locked up in the numbers, man. Don't 
sit there and think like I have to get this many numbers, my views or wherever on my shorts content or vertical content or wherever has to be, you know, X amount and stuff like that. I have to put two out a day or like every week or wherever put out like seven or eight or something like that. And it's just like, why? Why can't we just make content that you enjoy? Why are you making content in order to get the, like I understand that's the whole point, right? If you wanted to make it into a job is you're doing it for the views, you're doing it for the, the subs or whatever, the follows. But what happened to the days of just making content because you wanted to and if the views come, they come. If they don't, they don't. But so many people are just hyper focused on, I have to, I can only do content that's gonna give me views so I can get paid, so I can do it as a job and stuff like that. And for me, when I see that kind of content, to me, I can tell. I can tell when that's when somebody's doing a content. I, I've told my wife multiple times, the people that she, some of the people that she watches or wherever, I'm like, they don't act like that in real life. They, they're not hop, happy, go lucky, like all this explosive energy and stuff, a hype, super hype and stuff. I'm not saying everybody's not like that, but a lot of people, you can tell when they're faking it. You can tell that they're just doing something to get attention, to get the views or whatever, because they see everybody else doing it. And I feel like that's what's going on with content nowadays. That's what's kind of wrong, is the fact that people are focused on the wrong things when it comes to content. Make the content that you enjoy, do whatever you want to do, but keep in mind that the views will come. You don't, you can't, sometimes you can brute force it, but more times than not, if you're genuine and you pick the right topics to cover, cover at the right time, then you'll be good. Don't try to force it because you see this is the trend. You know what I'm saying? Be smart, you know, pick the analytics if it's a new hot game or new uh, product or something like that and you can get your hands on it, then obviously cover it and stuff. But don't be a follower, you know what I'm saying? Like, don't follow the sheep like everybody else. Just because this person's doing the dance to this song on TikTok doesn't mean all 25 million people have to do the same dance on TikTok. You know what I'm saying? Actually learn how to dance, learn how to, you know, pop and lock and stuff like that. Learn how to break dance, upload that content. It's still dancing, it's still popular on TikTok, dancing is, but then it shows off that you actually can dance, that you actually have skill. Whereas the other people are just showing that they can copy somebody else. I guess that's where we're at now with content. Everybody's just copying everybody else. Just food for thought. I don't know. Thank mm -hmm. you.